Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint the Knights of the Chalice Blade Guard. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Mephist on red. This is going to be to give the armour its initial base colour. I'm going to give this a nice smooth layer. Now if you're doing it over red, that's fine. It gives it a pretty smooth layer anyway. Over maybe black or white it might come out a little bit streaky, so you just want a nice smooth layer of my fist on red as the first layer. For this I'm painting it over an undercoat of Halford's Red Primer, one of the car sprays, but it works well as an undercoat. But if you get the Citadel my fist on red spray, that may work a bit better for you. So we're now going to use Vallejo Black, this is to do all the armour trim and the helmet, a few little details on him. As always, if you're using another kind of black, whatever make it is, just use normal plain black for this part. And working through some of the Adomitus ones before I move on to anything else. If there's any specific models people want to see, just let us know. Post up in the comments and I'll dive onto one of them in the next few weeks. We've still got one of the Assault Intercessors, the bikes, and a few different Netron characters to go. So now we're moving on to Citadel Rakarth Flesh, and we're going to do his robes, and also the parchment on the Purity Seal, which is stuck to his leg. Really have enjoyed painting the Adomitus miniatures, they are really good models. While I'm sorting out this video, I'm currently painting a Eradicator. They're really great models too. So with the Rakarth Flesh finished, we're going to move on to the next colour, which is Citadel Retributor Armour. So this is going to do a lot of the details, like the halo behind his head, the hilt of the sword, details on the shield, any other little bits that he might have. If he's the blade guard who's got the little skull on his helm, do it that one, that colour too. Although the Blood Angels type ones tend to have the metallic coloured helmets for the veterans. I just wanted to keep these kind of the normal colour just to break them up so they're not too stand out because they do have a lot of gold on them. So I like the black helm just to break that up a bit. So now we're going on to Vallejo Model Air Chrome. It's a great colour, plenty of pigments, really easy to apply because it's really really smooth so it does give a nice smooth colour to the blade. Also going to be doing these little spikes on the halo and the details and stuff on the power pack as well. There's plenty of really cool details on these models. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to paint the skulls on his knee. On the shield here also any of the other gold metallics that you haven't yet painted I'm going to use this colour for this just helps break up the gold a little bit to give some parts a slightly different colour makes them stand out a little bit more against the more generic gold of the Retributor armour Now it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to do the holster on his front and the pouches on his back. Once you've got them done with a nice smooth layer of Mornfang Brown, you can move on to the next colour. There's going to be a tiny little bit of Citadel Corn Red. I'm just going to use this for the wax section of the Purity Seal. Like so. 
we're going to start moving on to the shades. So the first shade is going to be Citadel Druchy Violet. I'm going to do all of the red with this. On the wider areas you want to try and just keep it close to the detailed areas. But you do want to make sure you get the undersides of the arms and things like that because we will be using this shade to obviously shade the underside of the arms and make them darker so that when we're reapplying the paints and the colours you're going to end up with that darker shadow underneath the arm and underneath the legs while the top parts are getting highlighted and getting more colours reapplied. So once you've finished the Drucci Violet, I'm now going to move on to Citadel Caro Bird Crimson. We're going to use this on the wax sections of the Purity Seals, so a very quick layer here. Next up it's going to be some Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this on both the parchment and on the robes. Although we'll be painting these very, very similar, we're going to keep highlighting the robes right the way up to pretty much pure white. And that will just give that, that little distinction between the Purity Seals parchments and the robes themselves. Next up is Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this on the gold, both the Liberator gold and the Retributor armour. Give that a good coating so you get all the details standing out with that. Once you've finished doing all the gold, we can move on to the next layer. Now we're going to be using some Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to be using this on the Mournfang Brown section, so the holster and the pouches on his back, and also the grip of the sword. So give these a decent layer of this, so you've got some nice shades around the openings on the pouches and the holster, and a little bit down the front just to catch those concave areas too. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil Gloss. I'm going to do this on the blade. If you've just got normal null oil, you can paint it exactly the same way as this, and then you can just gloss it at the very end, that's fine. But we're going to be doing all the silvery metallics and on the blade there. Now when you've done the blade, because it will all run down and pool at the base of the sword, what you want to do to stop that is, if you look here, I've managed to get it so it's all down the one end, just lie it down in some way similar to that, and twist the model so that the model has all the null oil pulled towards the end and that will keep it away from the hilt and give it a more even distribution and also give a really cool effect at the end of the sword. Now I'm going to start reapplying the colours. I'm going to use Citadel Mephist on red first. And start applying this to all of the armour plates and the front of the shield. Now you want to make sure you're leaving shade underneath the gold area so it looks like there's a bit of shading there and around each of the bolts on the front as well so however you're painting it you just want to make sure that where the shade would be if the light's coming from above you're leaving a little bit of extra shade in those recesses just to give it the effect of shadow next up we're going to use some evil sun scarlet which starts brightening up the red and also giving it that slightly orangey tint that the blood angels are famous for Although they are a successor chapter, I have gone for a very, very similar red to the main chapter themselves. Now you want to make sure that when you're applying this, you think about where the light's going to catch it. So that any areas that light will be hitting, you will be adding some of the Evil Sun Scarlet to those areas. And if it goes into a shaded area, you just want to leave it with the fist on red or the shade underneath. I'm going to start using some Citadel Squig Orange. I'm going to use this to do kind of edge highlights on all the parts where the light will be catching. And I do the occasional bit underneath, like these parts where the light will be catching that, because the shade from the Aquila would prevent any highlights further up. You also want to think about the edges of things where that's getting caught on it. And try and do some of the highlights pretty much all to the top of it, to be honest. 
you don't really want that many highlights on the underside of anything. Next up, we're going for Citadel Retributor Armour. Again, with the Retributor Armour, you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch it. So on the underside of the gold things, you don't want to be reapplying colour there. You want to leave the Agrax Earthshade shade on those parts. And then on the sides, which will be catching the light coming from above, you want to make sure that they get a good coat of it, just leaving the shade around the recesses. With that layer finished, we're now going to move on to Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to start reapplying the colour to all these skulls and the things that we just painted with Liberator Gold earlier. Now once you've got a nice layer of those, we're going to start highlighting the Retributor Armour. Again, thinking about where the majority of light is going to catch, you want to highlight those areas and then leave the bits that are going to be catching less light with just the Retributor Armour. You can see that as you add this, the shine really, really does come out on the Retributor Armour. gives it a really, really good look that it's reflecting the light. So now I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Air Chrome mixed with the Liberator Gold just to give it a brighter shade to highlight. And you're just going to be doing the edges with this of any edges which will be catching the light just to make them really stand out. The Model Air Chrome has got loads of pigments, it's really smooth and mixed with the Liberator Gold it does give a really really nice edge highlight to all these gold areas and really does pick them out and make them stand out. Next up it's Citadel Rakarth Flesh, so we're going to start reapplying the base colour to the parchments on the purity seals and also his robes. On both you just want to be leaving the shades in the recesses, so there's the darkened areas with the Rakarth Flesh going into it. Once you've finished that layer, we're going to add some Vallejo White, or whichever white that you tend to use, and you mix that with the Ricard Flesh to give you a lighter shade. And we're just going to paint this on probably about 70% of the area we've just covered with the Ricard Flesh. And then you're going to start picking out the highlights on the parchment, on the Purity Seals too, with this same colour. Once more, we're going to add some more white to the previous mix. And you're going to highlight about 50% of the area that you've just done the previous layer on, on the robes. And we're just going to use this layer to do the final highlight on the parchments as well. So you want to, on the parchments, you want to be picking out those top edges, all the little creases and the details on it. While on the robes, you want to be painting pretty much the crests of those ripples in the robe. Like so. I'm just going to add some more Vallejo white to the previous mix and do another highlight on these robes. So the reason we're doing these robes with the extra highlight, the very, very light highlight of the previous colours, it's just off white really, it's not really too far from white. It's just so that the robes stand out on the miniature. I wanted them to be really, really bright. So they're really, really clean. And then the parchment on the purity seals is sort of like a bit old and tatty maybe. Or made from sort of like, always thinking of being like really dry parchment. So now I'm going to use some Mornfang Brown and start working on the pouches and the holster. So you want to be kind of almost going fully over the holster. You just want to leave the Nuln Oil in the recesses down the front of the holster there. 
and on the top you want to leave a little bit of a shade. You want to make sure that you get around the edges and the corners. Get them with the Morn Fang Brown and kind of spread it out a little bit from there. But do make sure that you leave the shade in the recesses. Now we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Ricard Flesh to the Morn Fang Brown just to lighten that up. We're going to start highlighting it in the areas where the leather is likely to have been scuffed. So mainly on the edges and across any creases and things like that. Now rather than paint it smoothly, I'm doing kind of left to right strokes or up and down strokes depending on where it is just to give it that kind of rough look as if the leather has been scuffed. Now we're going to add a little bit more Citadel Rackarth Flex to the previous mix. I'm just going to do exactly the same but over a smaller area so you just want to be adding a few more little rough strokes to all the areas that you've just done the previous mix on. And that will just give it that kind of extra scuffed look where there's extra deep scuffs on it. Scrapes on the leather, that kind of thing. So you're going to be doing this all around the edges and the corners on it. The end of the little strap on it. The edges of the lid, that kind of thing. Just so it looks like it's suffered quite a bit of wear and tear. With the pouches done, we're now going to start working on the purity seals. We're going to start with Citadel Corn Red again. So you want to reapply a lot of the colour to the wax section itself. Leaving the shade in the recesses. Now we'll come to highlight it with Citadel Wasdaka Red. It's a really good colour. It does look like the kind of highlights you'd have on wax where it's been maybe scuffed or knocked a bit, but also when it's melted and gone thinner. I want to try and keep these highlights to the top edges, and the top areas where it's going to catch more light. And now we're going to add some Citadel White to the Wasdaka Red, and start highlighting this. Again, you only want to be putting this one on the top edges, just enough to make everything stand out. Like so. Next we're going to be using some Vallejo Black. I'm going to start reapplying this to all the areas that we've painted black previously, so the trim on the shield and the shoulder pads, on the section between the armour plates and this helm. Just give these a nice smooth coat of black, get rid of any little bits of paint that may have strayed from the other areas, or any bits where the paint may have been worn as you're holding the miniature. Once you've got all that reapplied, we can move on to the next layer. So now we're going to use some Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the black, so you want to think about where the light's hitting it, and apply the German Grey to that. So on the top of the helm, you might be kind of almost going to the areas where it'd be going pretty much straight down. So the top part of the helm, like the ridge run down the back, top centre, down the sides of that, and on top of the pieces over the ears and that kind of thing. And then you want to do the same thing on all the sections of black on him, and also highlight the crests of the sections between the armour plates. So now I'm going to start using Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey, and this is going to be to paint the edges to all of the black areas, the only part that we don't highlight using the mechanic of the standard grey is the sections between the armour plates. You could always think of them as some kind of like matte dulled rubber. And they don't highlight too much. Like so. So now we're just going to use some Vallejo Black to add text to the purity seals. And when you do this you want to get a really tiny amount of the paint on your brush and you just want to be dragging the brush away from the point. As long as you do it that way the bristles won't splay and you'll just get a nice thin line when you're doing them. For this I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush because I do like the points on them for little detail work. 
Now we're going to move on to Citadel Avalanche Sunset just to do the lenses in his helm. And because of the way the helm is, I found these quite tricky to do so they don't look 100% perfect, but it's good enough for the tabletop, so that's good enough for me. I'm going to try and get a nice smooth layer of Avalanche Sunset on each lens. If you do stray onto the highlights or the black, don't worry about that, we can always paint over that no problem. And once you've finished applying the Avalon Sunset, you can then move on to the shade for it. And we're going to be using Citadel Cassandora Yellow. And this gives it a slight orangey tint, which is ideal for around the edges of the lenses. So now we're going to start working on the sword, and we're going to start using Citadel Araman Blue. That's a great colour for starting off the kind of electricity effect for the power field that covers the sword. You basically want to be doing kind of lightning patterns up and down the blade. You can spend a lot of time on this doing really, really nice blending if you want to. But as this is going to be played, it's not for anything special. It's just getting a fair few layers on it to get it looking good. So with the lightning pattern finished initially, we're going to add some Vallejo white to the Araman blue. Now any white will do for this. We're just going to highlight the lightning sections. Now where you're highlighting here is where the joins are in the lightning. So if two pieces touch each other or join together, you want to be highlighting those areas and spreading away from it as well. So the only sections that are going to be Araman blue remaining are the areas that are sort of like long and don't connect to anything. As the layers progress on this, you will see what I mean. I also tag the video where to do a full walkthrough on this pattern and how to do it. Now we're going to add some more Vallejo white to the previous mix. I'm going to start highlighting this once again. Where we're highlighting it this time is the same kind of areas, but you want to leave a little bit of the previous layer showing at the end each of these highlights so where there's just a long flat section with a join at each end you would have the Araman blue in the middle then you would have the lighter highlight towards each of the joins and then the lighter highlight closer to each of the joins than the previous one so you can see how this is coming along here You're probably seeing it is probably better than the explanation I've just given Now we're adding another little bit of Vallejo white to the previous mix. We're just going to continue highlighting this. As I say, you can blend this and get it really, really smooth. You can do all different kinds of styles on power swords. I've got a few videos up of those already. If there's any other different kinds that you'd like to see, just shout out. You can see now with the darkness of the blade using that null oil, the way it's settled at the end there, and you've got the lightning going over the top. How cool that looks! So, we're adding a little bit more white to the previous mix once more. We're just doing tiny little bits of highlight on that. Slightly out of focus here, sorry. And finally, we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo white, pure white this time, without any previous mixes. And just going to do a tiny little bit of highlight in the middle of each of those joins. And that gives it that kind of flashing light so the power field is going all up the sword. Like so. So next up, I'm going to be using Citadel Avalon Sunset and start working on the lenses because the shade is now dried. You just want to be re-highlighting that with the Avalon Sunset 
and leaving a little bit of the Cassandora yellow in the recesses around the edge of the lens. So we're adding a little bit of Vallejo white to the Avaland sunset and we're just going to do a highlight and what we're aiming to do here is a little crescent at the left hand end and at the right hand end of that other lens. So the crescent is towards the back of the lens. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm going to do a highlight of about half the size of the previous one. I have jumped the gun here and put the little spot on the front of the lens before I'm using the pure white, but that's not a worry, we can just go over that with the pure white in a moment. So now we're just going to be using pure white on those lenses, and we're going to redo the dots at the front of the lens there. I'm going to put the highlight colour on rather than the actual pure white. Just put a spot of that in the middle, and then you're going to use pure white just to do a little tiny bit on the crescents at the back of each of those lenses. So next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of McCrag Blue. I'm going to work on this little shield at the front and do a little bit of heraldry. And you can see there there's a little bit of roughness there. I think there's been a, something on the shield when I've started painting. So I do scrape that off. You'll see that getting smoother a little bit later on on one of the other parts of this section. But what we're going to do is do a stripe of McCrag Blue. And with the stripe on there, we're going to add a little bit of white to the McCrag Blue and just give that a bit of a highlight. Now with the heraldry you can do pretty much anything you want to with it. These stripes, skulls, any kinds of shapes and patterns you want on it, so that you really can go to town on these if you want to. I'm keeping this one pretty simple. So we're just going to go to Vallejo White once more. This time we're just going to be drawing a little skull on the shield here. So we've got transfers and you're only good at using them. Could be a good time to put them on now, but I'm pretty pants at using transfers or decals. So just paint this on by hand. So with the rough outline done, we're now just going to use a little tiny bit of McCrag blue. Just going to do the little arrowhead for the nose. And two little ovals for the eyes. I'm just going to quickly switch back to Vallejo White. And just touch up those eyes and get them to the right shape. Like so. So now we're going to be painting the veteran symbol on his shoulder. This we're going to be using Vallejo Black. We're going to start off by just doing a large square. When you've done the square, take a look at it, make sure it is in the, the right place on the shoulder pad and that it is square. As always, when you're doing anything like this, you just want to keep checking it, looking at it straight on, make sure it fits okay. And on the other shoulder pad, we're going to be doing the Knights of the Chalice symbol. Which thankfully is pretty straightforward. I'll link up both links to both things once they're finished. We've got Citadel and fist on red now, and we're going to take the corners out of the square. And all we do from there is we work in from those little intakes of the line there, diagonally into the centre. And you're just expanding these out till you've got that square corner from the veteran symbol there. Once you've got those in place, you then going to use some Vallejo Black to just touch up this. You can see on this bottom layer here, it's slightly shorter than it should be, so we're just going to add a little bit more of that. See some of the images waiting to be painted in the background there. And all you're doing is you're touching it up and tweaking it here and there. There's a video of this full thing coming out on Sunday. But as long as you get the rough shape on there, that's the main thing. With the veteran bad finished, that is the finished Knights of the Chalice blade guard. We'll be doing a veteran symbol 
video on Sunday. I'll link up tonight to the Chalice Chapter badge and the previous video of that too. But great miniature, really good fun to paint, lots of really cool details on it. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to our other social media link below. Thanks very much.